very rare that I throw bait. I mean, very rare. And actual bait, anything a fish can eat. And it's just a personal preference. I have no, I'm not judging. It's just my, that's what trips my trigger. That's what makes me have a good time angling. But I know a lot of you uh, fish with power bait. And w the problem with power bait is deep hooking. So the folks at Berkeley put me in touch with the Europeans who fish with power bait a lot in, in stocked private water because that's all they have to fish. So first of all, I'll count your lucky blessings that we have all kinds of trout around here. But second of all, they're fishing heavily, heavily pressured trout and they have developed techniques with power bait to make it very effective. And so what they're doing with power bait, you, you guys are familiar with power bait. Now, first of all, you're gonna see this is power bait too, right? I'm confusing the issue, power bait, power bait. No, this is rubber, this is PVC that's infused with power bait scent. This stuff, the actual power bait, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure what it's made out of and they wouldn't tell me when I went to the Berkeley factory and looked at it. Uh, I can tell you that it's biodegradable and I can tell you that it won't hurt fish in your fish tank. And so from that standpoint, I still don't wanna be leaving it all over the place. And the biggest problem with it that I see as an angler is a guy puts it on a hook and he hangs it under a bobber and you're out there and you're, you got, I'm just gonna pretend this, I just have the bobber right here, okay? So here's my hook, I got a big dab of power bait right here, okay? And my bobber's floating on the surface. I'm just waiting. So this fish comes up and he looks at this and he looks at this and he's, oh, it smells good, I'm gonna eat it. And he swallows that piece of power bait. Well, the problem is before you even know, he has swallowed that power bait. And now you have deep hooked that fish and deep hooking him is a very high percentage thing with any static bait, not just power bait. Anything that's just sitting there and is edible, there's a good shot they're gonna swallow. A worm, a power bait, a grasshopper, it doesn't matter. So the way to make them not swallow this stuff is to mold it into shapes and retrieve it. And they sold me on the technique because of the fact that, well, they, oh, you don't ever deep hook them. You can always release them. Ah, okay, I like, like the sound of that. What they didn't tell me is how incredibly effective it was compared to just letting it sit under a bobber out there. So we went to one of the most popular and heavily pressured, heavily stocked, lakes in Northern Colorado, where everybody fishes power bait all the time. And everybody else that was fishing there were fishing with power bait with the exception of one other guy who was towing flies behind a float tube. This is not a technical fishery is what I'm trying to say. I started molding this stuff and retrieving it and we were catching fish like three or four to one over the next closest people uh, to the point where people were asking us about how are you catching all these fish? So there's my shape. And if camera looks at that, I'll hold it real still. As far as I can tell, I'm not a European, but as far as I can tell, that's pretty close to what they call the ducky. And so if you watch, I'll just pitch it over here at camera will watch it come through the water column right here. If I retrieve it, let it go down a little bit where I can retrieve it. And then if you watch it, as it comes along here, it spins all the way through there. So now I have effectively an inline spinner made out of power bait. No trout is gonna swallow that because it's coming through the water column. I'm gonna know when he bites it, and when he does, I got him. And so it's a it's a basically a really, really good way to mix lure fishing and bait fishing, which is why we wanted to share this with you because I did have the opportunity to deal with the Europeans and they sell a lot of power bait. And, oh, there's one, and got that sucker. Yeah, they sell a lot of power bait in Europe and this is how they fish it. They don't put it under a bobber and just sit there and wait for a fish or sit on the bottom. And I haven't even seen this fish yet, here he comes, but I'd be willing to bet when you get him over here, that hook is in the tip of his snout or the corner of his mouth, one or the other, and I am correct. There's the hook, guys, right in the corner. Just like that, hook's already out. Fish is no worse for the wear. Perfect little stalker trout. See you, buddy. I think that's pretty good illustration of the point right there. So by bending the various shapes, uh, the, and they have names, some of, them, some of them spin, some of them just wobble depending on how they're bent. But by, by doing that, you can literally mix up no different than a guy mixing up his lures. On top of it, with the power bait, I can blend colors together, make a custom color pattern, something like that as well. But really, the, the, the sky is limitless. It's up to you as far as how big, how small, what shape, long, skinny, short, fat, whatever. It's all up to you. 
the, at the end of the day, what I'm, all I'm doing is taking a straight shank hook and I'm, and I'm gonna grab this one. This one's got, a, happens to have a wire weed guard on it. I grabbed it because I wanted to show you the hook and I can hold the weed guard to, to do that. So I'm gonna hold on to the weed guard. If you notice, I've got a straight shank hook right here. There's no up in the eye, uh, you know, no downturn to the eye. There's no bend in the shank. And it's just a straight shank hook. This is the shape of the hook that the Europeans told me to use for molding my power bait. And the reason being, and this is big, obviously this is not the actual hook. I would want to see it shrunk down quite a bit, but I'm, I want you to be able to see it. So they're going to take that power bait and I'm going to just get a big dollop of this out of here. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Okay, it smells like, in my opinion, cat food. Um, I can tell you that trout absolutely love it and whatever. So normally most of you would just take a ball and you would mold it like this into a little ball and a, maybe a better ball than that, but it would be a ball and you would put it on a treble hook and you would throw it out and wait for the fish or you might put it on a single hook, whatever. The Europeans say, no, 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 take that thing, roll it into a stripe for starters, get it in a nice round, whatever, I just made a carrot. Let me get this a little rounder than that. You can tell I'm not a European here. Okay, so they make it into a, into a shape, okay? Then they take one end of it and smash it and bend it and, it, and the hook's in the middle of it, and they make it bend it. And you can see this in the footage, guys, better than you can in the garage here. But when they bend it, now it's got a bend in it like this. And when I retrieve it through the water calm, it's going to spin and it's going to create its own action. And anyone that's ever been trout fishing knows that trout like inline spinners, which spin, they like spoons, which wobble. I can make power bait wobble or spin just by dictating how I mold it on that hook. So the key to it is you can mix different colors, you can make it different shapes, you can make it spin fast or slow or just wobble along. I can make it bigger sizes. I can also use some of the power bait that's got glitter in it um, or, or shine to it so that I have more color if I want. One of the things the Europeans did and which we did on the show that we filmed here is we mixed two colors. So we've got a green, here, let me grab this one. That's the wrong one. Yeah. So here we got tequila salt right here, right? So it's a green color and an orange color so I can get the strobe effect of two different colors. But basically the whole shooting match comes down to molding it into a shape, and then molding it on the hook itself and then just retrieving it. And the first question I got when we did the original day of doing that was, well, doesn't it come right off the hook? Not nearly as much as you'd think for starters. It stays on there pretty good if you mold it good. And second of all, if you stick it in the cold water, it actually gets firmer and trout live in cold water. So it actually gets harder once you put it in the water than it does uh, on your hands, even though it will dissolve over time. Ugh, got that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's pretty funny, guys. I got a little more ambitious on the hook set because we have lost some fish. And once again, I want to point out, you can see the hook in this guy right here, right in the tip of the snout. And the one knock that people have always had on bait fishing for trout is that everybody gets deep hooked. Well, you can see the hook right there. I haven't even touched the fish. No shenanigans here yet. Easy fish. There's the hook, I have a hold of it. You can see it's right in the corner right there. It don't even, it would be nothing to it. It came out just like that. And there he goes. Mm -hmm.